Hey everyone, it's Delantix, and today Mordog released the patch 13.24 preview, which goes live Wednesday and stays on for the next three weeks. In this video, I'm going to go over all the changes, give an overview of the meta we saw last week and at the Vegas LAN, and then give some predictions on how the meta will shake up after the patch. Without further ado, let's go. So going into patch 13.24b, the first big change is a system change to the level 9 headliner odds which turns them from a 10% chance to hit a 5 cost headliner to a 2% chance only, with the rest going to those 4 cost headliners. So this is a big change for if you're looking to fast 9. You can no longer fast 9 and hope for that 10% chance roll that you're going to hit a 2 star headliner and get bailed out by that. The percentages seem pretty low, but realize that like if you're rolling 10 times, you know that's what 20 gold? And you're usually rolling a lot when you hit like level 9 for the first time to stabilize your board, make it strong. So that 10% was pretty high. And even this 2% is, it, it still exists, right? You're still going to see some high rollers hit these and play around these. But it's more of a notion that um, if you want the 2-star headliners, you're going to have to go to level 10. And you should instead stay around playing a 4-cost headliner you might pick up at level 8 or... Transition a new one at level 9 if you truly went fast 9 with something like a Corky, which is something we actually saw at Vegas. Alright, next we're going to look at Augments. So first of all, all training dummies were nerfed uh, by 10 armor and MR. This is a big hit to all of the training dummy Augments, which were incredibly strong uh, throughout the last patch. And honestly, from the beginning of the set, especially stationary supports, they all had extremely high placement placements. Uh, crash test dummies was very strong. And even scapegoats and escort quests had good placement as well. Just giving you a free dummy is honestly a lot of frontline where a lot of the comps um, actually don't have that much of a strong frontline until they get, you know, Alawi 2-star, Yorick 2-star, especially like super fans, their frontline is pretty weak. So those training dummies were really, really good in those comps. So a good nerf to those. Um, honestly, probably will still be pretty good augments. Just having the frontline as an option is awesome. And the bonus effects are always welcome. Looking at Silver Augments, the first change is a nerf to Cutting Corners. So Cutting Corners reduces the XP cost per level by 4. Um, and what this meant is that if you took it at 2-1, which is the only place you can take it, you would immediately get level 4 because level 4 usually costs 4 XP, but with this augment, it would cost 0. And with this nerf, um, this makes it so that you don't get that level 4 immediately. Once you take it, you do have to pump another 4 gold into leveling, which is a pretty big nerf considering when you play this augment, uh, and especially if you want to maintain high HP or even play for a win streak, you always level to 4 on 2-1. And especially if you're playing Cutting Corners, you know, you're looking for those higher chances for a 2-star headliner because they are generally stronger than the 1-cost ones, the one cost ones. So that's a pretty big nerf to Cutting Corners. I still think it's going to be pretty good. If you do the math, you know, it's, what, 5 or 6 XP loss total uh, or 6 gold loss total those breakpoints do become kind of odd. I mean, quite literally, they turn into an augment breach. So it'll be a nerf, but I think it'll still be a pretty good augment. So on a roll, while Vi and Yasuo both take a decent buff in the end of this patch, um, I still don't think the one cost rerolls are going to be strong enough to warrant you taking this augment. If you're forcing a one cost reroll, this will help. And you still don't want to take this past 2-1. Hopefully, honestly, they remove it from 3-2, from being available on 3-2, because it's just not very good. However, they are buffing it to give you 3 gold instead of 2 once you take it. And then the limits per turn of how many free rolls you get is moving up to 3 from 2, which is pretty interesting. I think if you high roll, then this is going to be a really good augment to get that one co those 1 cost really fast. Um, but you want to be careful with the comps you play with this. I'm pretty sure like Yasuo reroll, you can go for Kennen 3-star and Yasuo 3-star. Um, but you're really focusing on Yasuo. And obviously Jinx, uh, Punk, you're going for every Punk unit 3-starred. Um, but if you're playing for like Annie, um, Annie is the only one cost you're really rolling for. So taking on a roll might be a bait because you're pretty much, you're over-indexing pretty hard on your Silver Augments. But if if you have a bunch of copies of a unit already, you might want to take this if you're playing for that one cost reroll. Vampire Prism 1 receives a nerf. So this is one of the best silvers, or if not the best combat silver overall. And even if you win a streak, you are still happy to take Vampire Prism 1 because the ability is just so good. So they are nerfing the bonus HP for 5 missing HP from 4 to 2, which is a solid nerf. Happy to see this one. Still probably going to be a pretty good augment for combat-wise. Alright, on to the gold augments. So the first buff on the list is Bigger Shot, 
which is getting a buff after it was nerfed previously because of the MF pump. So it's now back up to 75% AD. And you'll see later in this patch, there's also a buff to the Big Shot trait itself, as well as a buff to Jin because they're buffing blue buff uh, and giving it AD. So be on the lookout for Big Shot being a pretty good comp this patch. I honestly think Ezreal with four Big Shot is already pretty strong. And I think a bunch of Chinese players are playing that right now. So I expect Ezreal to be and Big Shots overall to be a very strong comp this patch. So be on the lookout for that. Blinged Out gets a 20 HP nerf per item. Blinged Out went from one of the worst augments to one of the best augments, given all the true damage buffs and the power of Senna. So this is a welcome nerf. It was one of the highest placing augments. And I don't think it's a huge nerf, but we'll see overall what the patch says about true damage after we run through the other nerfs in the patch. Inspiring Epitaph receives a 5% shield nerf on every unit that dies. If you tune into the Soju and Frodan co stream this weekend, uh, you'll hear you would have heard Riot Kents talk about how Epitaph was pretty strong and that their goals with the augments were to make you sort of have to play around it. But right now, you can basically just stack your dudes how you normally would, and they would eventually shield around your front line, give your front lines attack speed, and that would eventually augment it towards your carry. It became a lot more linear when you play this augment than they want it to be. So they're going to tap it with a little nerf and probably see how it looks after that. I assume this is going to be still very strong augment. Given it's just a 5% shield per every unit that dies, you know, you, in the late game, you're still going to have 8 or 9 units that die. So be on the lookout for that. I still think it's a very takeable augment. Little Buddies. This augment is extreme, was extremely strong in especially the TF comp where you play Nami and Taric and Gragas as well. Just Those are just three disco units that you always play if you're playing the transition. And obviously you drop those off later for legendaries in the late game, but this made the TF comp extremely powerful in, as a transition comp. And honestly, you could even stick on Disco. This was a huge enabler of that. Also, KDA, Lilia, Kennen, Superfans benefit a lot from this. 10 HP lost per buddy as well as 1% attack speed lost per buddy. Still think this is going to be a pretty good augment just based on, you know, you take this if your comp uses a bunch of the one or two costs, in, especially in the late game. Still think it's going to be a pretty good augment. Low interest rates, honestly, I had to look up what this augment does. It says it caps your max interest, but you gain two gold at the start of every player combats. Note that it's every player combat, so you don't get this on the PvE rounds. Right now, it's at a 4.9 something, so not really anyone's taking it, and it's not very good. The people who are taking it are leaning towards rural comps, which makes sense for a sort of low econ or a sort of hyper roll playstyle, which is basically what this is. If you play the other sets, it's the hyper roll augment, it's hustler, it's the sump portal. So it is this form of that in the set, except that you are allowed to use interest, but you get a little less gold per turn. They're upping it to three for the interest cap, so you can hold up to 30 gold and get three interest per turn, which is a pretty good buff. I still don't think this will be that good, but we'll see if some new real comps pop off and use this pretty well. But my guess is that it'll still be pretty underused. Stars Are Born got a huge nerf from last set and going into this set, so it's getting a buff here. From 1 gold to 5 gold starting, Stars Are Born, is, the placement right now is pretty bad. Uh, I think a big part of that is the fact that you can hit 2 cost headliners pretty easily in the early game, especially, I mean, if you high roll, right? You know last set you would go Caitlyn to get that extra power in the early game if you hit Stars Are Born, but that's kind of subsided because people can find those 2 star 2 costs a lot easier in the early game. So Stars Are Born gets a buff here. I still think it's, honestly, I like playing Stars Are Born in the last set, not so much this set. Right now it's at a 4.93. I think it'll go up a bit, but still probably not one of the better gold augments you can get. Frieza Crowd gets a 5 HP per 3 cost nerf, and the biggest user of this augment was the Sumeru Rule Comp, or the Country Rule Comp, which uses 5 different 3 costs. So that would have so that's a 25 overall HP nerf for everyone for this augment. Still very good augments if you are playing around Sumeru Country, as well as some other comps can use it like Lulu and Yone. Um, honestly, maybe if you're using less 3 costs, then you'd want to stray with this augment a little more because of this nerf, but if you're playing Country Samira, still an awesome augment to have. When you compare this augment to Bulk, which honestly I'm surprised didn't get a nerf here, uh, all 3 tiers were honestly really performing really well. The Bulk 2 gives 333 health per units, and even with this nerf, it's going to be 80 times 5 if you're playing Country, so 400 HP per unit, so Freeza Crowd still overperforms Bulk.
too big to fail. This augment is just straight trash on the live server right now. Uh, there's not really any big bruiser comps, especially bruiser six comps. Obviously, people are playing like Alawi, EDM, Zac as frontline to get some CC off, Dragus for Spellweaver. But there's no real six bruiser comp like there has been in the past. So they're buffing up this augments. More damage on the explosion and time before the large explosion uh, is reduced to make the augment clock faster. Still don't think we'll see much or any play of this augments in the competitive scene as long as there's, you know, I think they just need a strong comp to play this round and there's not really that right now. Stationary support 2 and 3 can no longer roll measly big gem. So gem is the one that after 15, 15 seconds, it prints you gold based on how many units you have alive, as well as giving your team a 30% bonus damage. So this item was really broken if you hit it early and you take stationary support and then you get a either one or two support items based on the tier you got. And there were a selection of 12 support items you could hit. So you would have a one out of 12 chance to hit a gem. And if you listen on the co-stream to any of the players that were saying, if you hit that 1 in 12 chance, you basically already won the game because the amount of gold that generates from the Measly Big Gem was ridiculous. And just the added value of having the dummy as well as the 30% damage increase was just way too much value to have on an augment that you had a 1 out of 12 chance of hitting. And obviously stuff like support cash exists. And the other ones that give support items like teaming up also exist and give you a random one. So removing the so so removing the ability to get needlessly big gem off these I completely understand. Note how there's not a removal for stationary support one. Stationary support one only comes in after seven rounds, so you're not getting that gold for those first seven rounds. So honestly, that makes sense as a change. But honestly, yeah, happy to see gem gone from that pool. As for the augment itself, these other support items are still pretty good, and it still gives you a dummy, although they got nerfed. I still expect this to be a pretty high place of augment. All right, let's talk traits. Big Shot gets an 80 buff at four and six. Pretty welcome buff. Honestly, I think for Big Shot, Ezreal was already really strong whenever I played it as a transition piece or as a piece to catch on my heart seal. I actually felt that it was pretty strong and I know China's playing it already. So we'll see how this impacts the traits. Obviously six Big Shot, I feel like you did a buff. Um, if you're playing six or five carries or if you have an emblem four, I mean, that's still a lot of focus on carries that are honestly, not very good because you have to play Corky or Kaisa. If you're not playing those traits already, then they're honestly not that good. So I welcome the six Big Shot buff, and we'll see how this shakes out the meta. Honestly, I think Big Shot will be a pretty big part of it. Bruiser gets a buff to the six Bruiser, so we're seeing a buff to six Bruiser in tandem with that too big to fail augment buff. I don't think this will do anything, honestly, to the Bruiser trait. Obviously, if you high roll like a Bruiser emblem, then maybe you can tech it in, but honestly, the bruisers have just so much, they have so little overlap in their traits that it's not really ever worth running more than two or three in the end game. The ones that you're looking to run are Dragus for Spellweaver, and then Zac for EDM, uh, Set for Mosher, and Alawi in general is just a big, is it just a good bruiser. So I can see you going to four, but once you're looking for five bruiser, you're playing Olaf or Tom Kench, and that's just not very good. EDM overall gets a buff at 3, 4, and 5. EDM as a trait overall was pretty weak. The units were very strong. Lux was already a pretty decent item holder for 3 cost, especially if you, her, if you hit her as a headliner on level 6. She would be a really good unit for stage 3 or 4. Zed is also a great unit in this meta. And then the combo of Zac and Lux was used for CC in the Dazzler comp. But overall, the EDM trait at the vertical is just not very good. Jax is also. Kind of a meme comp at this point he has seen some good performances but not not anything too spectacular so some buffs to the EDM vertical are very welcome we also see buffs to the frequency of jacks and zed getting their abilities copied the edm copied abilities for zed and jacks are pretty weak compared to lux and zach so this is a welcome change mosher gets a buff at four and six which makes sense not really anyone was playing four or six mosher you'd really only play two mosher if you're playing the country rule around ergots and you would play two Mosher with sets to play Alawi and Yorick in the end game to give them those traits. Not really anyone was playing four Mosher except unless you had like a headliner poppy for a transaction piece. But now this is a little more appealing towards that. I remember Mordog over the PB said that you don't want to build around six Mosher and they don't really want you to build around six Mosher. They're ex not expecting it to be a good comp to build around. So I don't expect it to be a very strong comp to play around 
you know, a poppy carry. It will be better though, and it will be a pretty good transition piece as poppy also gets an AD buff. So I'm not sure if you'll want to play six monster, but we'll see if people cook it up. Poppy also receives a buff along with this monster change, so be on the lookout for that as a comp. Rapid Fire gets the same buff that Big Shot did, which means it's only at 4 and 6. So right now people are only really playing 2 Rapid Fire, whether it's Aphelios or Jinx Reroll or Senna or Lucian Carry on the cap board. Uh, even Caitlyn, because Caitlyn doesn't really benefit from the Rapid Fire trait as much because her ability makes her stop auto-attacking and cast for a few seconds, whereas Lucian does benefit from it pretty high because his ability scales off attack speed, which was bugged before but is now fixed, I believe. So this is a pretty welcome buff as no one was really playing for 6 Rapid Fire. Try it out, I don't think you should probably look towards playing this as a final board because that much attack speed is not really that relevant unless you get like a Tome. If you get a Tome, I think that changes things. You can give a ton of attack speed to someone like Sona which can ramp up your legendary board, but honestly you're probably not playing 6 Rapid Fire still. So Spellweaver gets a buff at the 5, 7, and 10 breakpoints and pretty sizable buff to the 10 breakpoint. Spellweavers right now, you're playing towards that endgame package of Sona plus two Spellweavers. If you have the headliner, you can play towards five, which you'll welcome that new buff. Yeah, Sona, Echo, Gragas, Lulu, all extremely strong and synergistic champions for your board. And then Ari is also already strong right now. So it's a pretty interesting change for the Spellweavers. I don't think spell Vertical Spellweaver was a very good comp earlier. We saw Malala win out with the Annie reroll, but you know, you don't really go towards that huge vertical in that comp, you just splash around legendaries. So we'll see how this changes things. All right, moving on to champions. Vi finally gets a buff, very, very welcome buff. He gets 10 less mana per cast and five armor and MR bonus for his stats. I don't really think this will affect the punk reroll comp that much. I don't think it'll pull it out or into the meta. The fact that you're not going to carry Vi, she's just too squishy and her ability is really really wonky in the fact that you want her to be less HP than the enemy but you also want her to tank and stay alive as a frontliner for the punk comp. I don't really think I see her right now being like a solo carry or a primary carry in a 6 monster kind of reroll comp but I, yeah, I, I don't think these stats are enough to make something like that happen. Yasuo gets a 50 HP buff and a 10% AD buff on his spell. Uh, Yasuo was dominating the PvE and got a ton of nerfs. Uh, true damage is really strong right now. This is mostly a buff to true damage overall if you're going for that high vertical true damage. Basically you're playing 6 true damage with Yasuo until you hit Tiana or if you don't have that true damage plus 1 headliner. So this is a slight buff to Yasuo. I don't think the Yasuo reel will come back in high elo. Still going to be a fun comp to play in casual settings though. Two costs. Gragas gets a slight damage bump. So Gragas is a solid tank, but you're not going to make him your solo tank. Uh, you're going to want a separate booster for that or Echo if you're playing Spellovers only. is just a better option right now, even though he is extremely contested. Three star Gragas. I mean, I don't really see 3-star Gragas ever being played, even if you're playing something like a Lulu rule, you'd still rather play around Echo and Nico, and Gragas is more of an aside, but he gets a slight damage buff. Kale gets a pretty sizable buff for her on hit damage at all ranks, so 5 bonus damage per hits, and then the end of her ability cast deals 20 more damage per rank, and then 45 more at Kale 3. No one was really going for Kale 3, and we could tell, so I think this is a pretty good buff, and we might see Kale more often. The Edgelord trade is honestly not that good right now. Even though Yone is really strong, you really play around Crowder instead. So we'll see if this is enough to push Kale into the meta as a comp for rerolling. Honestly, I don't think so. Just based on the fact that uh, a Senna still exists and is really strong if you're going to play for a two cost reroll. And then the Edgelord trade is just honestly not that good. Twitch gets a buff, so five more armor and MR, and then 25% AD buff on his spell. So funnily enough, this twenty, this five armor and MR buff is a buff to that double Hodge frontline Twitch comp, which is pretty funny. It's seen play somewhat, some really fringe play, like popular in Saudi stream once, and it's popular in China, but it's not really a very competitive comp. No one really pulled it out of Vegas to that much success. So this is just a buff to Twitch overall, making him a little more tankier. Still don't think it will pull him into the meta compared to everyone else on the list. Four costs. There were no three cost changes. As we talked about before, uh, Mosher got a buff at four and six, and Poppy also gets a twenty eighty buff at all ranks. Obviously, five more at three star, but 
Um, honestly, I think Poppy as a headliner was already a pretty strong transition piece, both as a tank and a carry. Uh, basically, as Soju said it and a stream on a stream before, she was an anti-heal check because Mashu gives her that percentage healing from the traits, and then her ability smacks your units around. So this is a pretty pretty decent buff to Poppy on that AD. Most people right now are building Poppy with uh, war mogs, like her super fan item gives her war mogs. So maybe you're looking to itemize more AD and see if she can be she become a monster with those both those monster buffs to the attack speed and the spell AD buffs here. Maybe you're looking to itemize her with more AD. Something like Triforce can be awesome on her, giving her a bunch of stats, especially that health and the AD that she wants. And maybe you're just playing her as a transition piece. She's even stronger now. So look towards that. Zack gets a 100 HP buff and 30 less mana to cast. So Zack was really strong in PB and hit took a bunch of nerfs. Um, just because the EDM comps were actually pretty strong on PBE, but now not so much. So this is a pretty good buff to Zach. He he was being outperformed by the other headliners, Thresh and Blitzcrank, uh, just for their utility and Blitzcrank for his raw tankiness. So this is a pretty good buff to Zach, and this also inherently buffs the Dazzler comp when you run Zach and Lux until you hits when you run Zach and Lux for the extra CC until you hit Alawi. So pretty good buff to Zach. And 5 costs, only 1 change, which is a nerf to Sona, the attack speed form, which is pretty much the only form you're using right now, other than damage sometimes in some fringe cases. The healing form got nerfed way too much from PvE, so it's not even worth considering, but we'll see after these changes. Um, you're getting 20 less on hit damage, you're getting 15 less on hit damage at level 1, and you're getting 15 less on hit damage per attack on the 1 star Sona cast, and then 20 less damage per attack on the 2 star Sona cast, which is a pretty sizable nerf. I still expect this to be the best form for Persona because attack speed is also just really strong and the on-hit damage is still pretty plentiful, but maybe this puts her a little more in tune with the other 5 cost carries. The items are still going to be the same for Sona if you're playing this attack speed variant. You're going to want those Rage Blades, those Shoujins, Red Buff, Shiv, any attack speed or mana region items. So we got a bunch of headliner buffs. So Nami gets 5 AP. Um, all of these are stat buffs. So Nami was... Nami 3 has been played, like, not competitively, but it's seen some play. It's pretty slow. I think it's too slow to be a consistent comp. As in, like, she can only bubble one person at a time, and if she's not one-shotting people, then she's not going to get through the rest of the team in time for her to compete with other late-game boards. But she does gain 5 AP, making her early game a little stronger. Right now, the strongest Chosens that are carries themselves are Annie and Corky for AP and AD, respectively. Obviously, stuff like Kennen was super strong in the last patch before getting a nerf. Lilia for the super fan and those traits being really strong in the early game. So Olaf and Vi are also one cost headliners that get a buff. Pretty good stat buffs to both of them. Um, maybe you'll be able to play around these as transition pieces a little more. I still don't really believe in these three stars as carries though right now. For two costs, Gragas and Pantheon get a little tankier for their chosens. This makes sense. I mean, Pantheon, if you're playing Punky Roll, this is a really good buff because Pantheon's already, honestly, a really strong unit. And Gragas is mostly a transition unit. You're not really going for Gragas 3. So playing around this makes sense. This is usually you want the plus 2 disco or plus 2 spell reaver one for this trait because playing another bruiser for frontline is pretty easy. So Gragas gets 2% more damage reduction. Not a huge buff, but a welcome one for sure. 3 costs. Riven gets a buff to her HP, makes her a little tankier, which is very welcome. Riven 3 is being a little, doing a little better than she was on the release patch after she got so many nerfs on the PvE, but still not very, not too strong, getting outperformed by Yone for sure. So we'll see how this shakes up. I makes her, gives her 100 more HP. Not a huge buff, but a pretty decent buff to look at. You know, I, I think Riven was already a comp that you could look to play and keep in your pocket if you hit a lot of ribbons so i don't think it really changes that much blitzcrank gets 50 hp honestly i'm kind of surprised by this one i thought blitzcrank headliner was already pretty good i mean the tf comp did get weaker so when when it was really strong on the first release patch i thought blitzcrank headliner was already pretty good so he gets 50 more hp and that's it not a huge buff honestly a good thing that's not a huge buff but he does get a buff Welcome. I thought Blitz Drink was already pretty good, so we'll continue to see him being played. Poppy. Poppy Headliner gets a 50 HP buff and a 580 buff. I think this is a pretty big buff. Honestly, I think Poppy might be a comp to look at in this new patch because she got a triple buff. 
And that's kind of scary, honestly, because Poppy Headland was already a pretty good transition piece. So I would honestly look at Poppy as a great transition piece, um, especially for like melee carries. Or you can play her for one round, sell her, or even like a carry in a vertical monster comp. Thresh's Headliner gets a 150 HP. That is a lot. And honestly, Thresh Headliner was, I mean, it was a good bailout option, but you don't really want to stick around with it. I think this is an interesting like wave of changes. They're basically buffing all of the four cost Headliners. Or the four cost frontline headliners, and then Zach got buffs of his own. And I think this is kind of due to the headliner odd changes on five cost. So they're kind of encouraging you to play around those four cost tanks more than high rolling a Laoi or a Yorick, which honestly makes sense. So I think the read on the meta is that the four cost damage headliners are already pretty strong. Uh, stuff like Karthus, Akali, Caitlyn, Viego, Zed, already really good pieces. So I think they're buffing up the frontliners to keep them in line with the damage ones, which honestly makes sense. So for 5 costs, Kiana gets a nerf of 2% AD stacking per copy. The way Kiana's headliner works right now is that you get 5% bonus AD, and then every time you copy an item, which honestly, if you're playing a 2-star uh, Kiana, which you are from headliner, she activates your ability pretty often in a fight, so you're getting two, you're getting 5 AD permanently for the rest of the game every time you cast it, and honestly, that's a lot. So this is a pretty welcome nerf. If you high rolled this early, then it was really OP, and... Honestly, this is a good nerf because if they're moving the percent chance down to 2% and you high roll a Kiana early, it's not going to be as devastating as it was in the last patch. Still going to be really OP though. Alright, Ziggs gets 10 more mana reduction. We all know Ziggs was already pretty weak this patch given all the nerfs that he received. And honestly, thank goodness he got nerfed so much. This is a welcome change to the headliner. Given that Dazzler nor his unit got buffed though, I still think on this patch, Ziggs will get outperformed by every other legendary. On the items and we'll start with blue buff so blue buff was actually bugged on this first week patch where the damage amp that you get would actually be disabled it wouldn't work so that's fixed as well as giving blue buff 20 ad along with the ap so this is in line with shojin they nerfed shojin to be ad 20 ad and 20 ap and then they also nerfed the damage amp on kill to kind of balance it out so i think blue buff users right now are ari lulu ziggs those people that want to cast really often but the one biggest ad user i see for this is Jin. Jin really wants a mana item and is kind of overly reliant on a mana item right now which is kind of a problem with Jin. but if you do have a mana item and blue buff on him i think this will be an awesome usage of blue buff there are pretty good users of blue buff early on as well ezreal is also a pretty good user of blue buff if you're using as an, as an item holder and even corky is pretty good does this make blue buff better than Shojin on Jin? Honestly, I think so, given that Shojin is getting a nerf to have the exact same stats. That damage up is pretty good. Note that it also helps you kill two tiers, and Shojin requires a sword. And if you're playing big shots or you're playing on AD, you're going to want a lot of swords. So you're much happier slamming blue buff than Shojin. However, Shojin is just such a good slam because it's flexible on every AP carry. So give that a thought when you're building your items. Gargoyle Stoneplate gets a 5 armor and MR buff. This is a very welcome change. Stoneplate got gutted because of the TF comp last set and has been one of the worst or if not the worst tank item on the set since then. So yeah, I used to love slamming Stoneplate in the past sets, but nowadays you don't want to slam it because it is just so bad. With this buff, it'll be a little better, but I still think it will get edged out by other tank items, which is kind of fair given how generalized Gargoyle Stoneplate is. If you're looking for a kind of flexible tank item, I think Crown Guard is honestly just way better right now. Red buff. Red buff gets a 5 attack speed nerf. Finally, just finally, this item is usable on every carry. It's just way too good. And it's honestly BIS for a bunch of carries, like Akali, who can spread it throughout the entire team. TF, same idea. Urgot gives him a ton of attack speed that converts into AD. And he fights in a cone, so he spreads the red buff really easily. This item was way too strong, gives you way too many stats for an anti heal item. So yeah, good riddance. Honestly, still a really good item. I don't think this nerf was enough, given that it anti heals as well. So. I would still build this any time of the day, any time of the week, unless I need a ton of bows. Runans. Runans gets a 580 buff. Very welcome buff. I don't think anyone really is happy about selling a Runans because there are not many good players of Runans right now. Obviously, last set we had like Akshan where they made his interaction, his ability, uh, work with Runans. This set, it works on Lucian. So every two auto attacks or every two auto attacks from his ability shoots a Runans bolt. So it's really good on Lucian, but not that good on anyone else. So this is a welcome buff. I think other items for AD, like obviously red buff was so OP, I still think it's going to be better than Runans. Um, and damage wise, you probably just want raw damage over Runans. But 
This helps you kill a cloak. You'll feel a less bad about slamming it. Still not one of the best items though. All right, let's talk meta. So for one cost in the last patch, we had any roll. If you hit the correct items, they made the super fan item no longer give Shojin, which was really broken. So now it gives dual gauntlets for two costs. We had center reroll. Uh, Senna didn't receive any nerfs, and Mordok was pretty hesitant on that. But as everyone knows, that Senna is pretty much the strongest two cost headliner right now, and is extremely strong into the late game. And if you three star her, stays strong until the end of the game. For three costs, we had the country roll board. Samira, Urgot, Vex, and Mumu are all really strong right now. And also, we had Yone reroll pop up after a few buffs. For four costs, the four costs were actually pretty flexible this patch with the melee carries, Akali, Zed, and Viego, both Akali's being pretty good, being very strong melee carries. And then also for item holders, uh, Caitlyn and Ezreal were good AD item holders, while TF was a great AP item holder. For the five cost boards, we either played around the carries in Sona and Lucian for that combo for flying Sona's attack speed, so the real carry was Sona. Or you played around Kiana carry, Kane carry, or Jin to cap it all off. And then our front line was usually going to be a combination of York, Alawi, uh, Guardians, Moshers, Bruisers, something like that. So how did this patch shake up the meta? I think the biggest changes to note here were Ezreal with Big Shot and Poppy with Moshers. I think we might see a bit more of those pop up, especially at level 8, or a lot more of those pop up even, because I think they're pretty strong right now. I think honestly it's a bit of an overbuff. But nothing else really got nerfed that that much. The Kiana nerf was just a nerf to the headliner, so that really doesn't affect comp that much, or at all usually. And then the, the Sona nerf is pretty big though. But I think the biggest change to the fast nine strategy is that you're not gonna you're not gonna play around a hitting a five dollar headliner anymore because of that bag change. So that's the biggest defining meta defining change for me when looking at five costs. But other than that, I think the meta is probably gonna stay the same. Uh, there are a lot of buffs, which is great, good to see, but there's not, not that much nerf, and I don't think the buffs are enough to bring uh, too many new comps to the meta, other than those I mentioned, the Poppy and the Ezreal will be pretty good headliners. Alright, that wraps today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure you subscribe as I'll be making more videos throughout the week. Um, I'm done with school, so I'll have a lot more time to make those videos and get those out for you guys. So stay tuned, and climb on.